Welcome back to our series, Samash. I'm here with Chris, who's the GM of Alan de Castle de Dorchester, and we're going to have a conversation about service and what it takes to run a service in a three Michelin star restaurant. I wanted to start off by talking to you about the different stages of service uh, within a three Michelin star restaurant, or any restaurant for that matter, and you know why they're important. Well, I think the the main stages are sort of before service, uh, the briefing, service, and then after service. For me, the the, the most important. Uh, most important aspect of the service is actually before service. So it's the setup. So getting the restaurant ready. So that's where you concentrate a lot on your attention to detail. So making sure that when the guests come in, everything is perfect. Everything is set to fascinate and to, um, and to wow the guests. So when they walk in, everything has got to be perfect from the ironing of the tablecloths to the cleanliness of the chairs, to the rolling of the napkins. So there's no creases. Everything's got to be perfect and flawless. And I guess it, it takes a lot of training, or I guess your watchful eye, to make sure everything's on point. I mean, so how long was it? How long does it take for someone to train up at something like Amda Cass? And I mean, if I was starting tomorrow, what would you tell me? What advice would you give me? I think the, the main advice would be to watch and learn. So that, that's really the, the most important thing. So it's actually watching other people, how they're working, yeah. for you to get to know their little tricks that they're using to make sure that what they're doing is quick and efficient and correct. Because the, the worst thing you can do is actually do a job and then have to redo it because you've done it wrong. Yeah. So if you get the job done right the first time, that's perfect. Then you're, then you're, you're, you're at home. Okay. And then I suppose all this preparation leads us on to the next stage, which is obviously the service. How do you want the guests to feel? Uh, what, what is it that you're, you're trying to achieve with your team? Well, when, so, well, when the guests first come in, we want them to automatically straight away feel at ease. They, they don't need to be, it doesn't matter what kind of person they are, they need to come in and feel like they're coming into their home, but not their home, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So they, they need to feel relaxed and comfortable that everything we're doing, we are doing for them, and that, we are not, um, that we're not really overselling or trying to sell them something. We're just trying to make them enjoy themselves. Okay. So they need to relax, be comfortable. We start to bring them food, so the canapes, we bring them a, a, an aperitif. And then afterwards, everything we're doing is just what they want us to do, but we're just one step ahead. So before they think about what they want, we've already brought it to them. So perhaps in the past, three our restaurants, particularly particularly French ones, even um, have had almost a reputation for being a little bit intimidating, a bit stuffy. I mean, how how do, how do you think service has changed over the years in that environment? And I mean, just being here, it has and meeting all of you, there's nothing stuffy about it at all. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to get your view on on how service has changed over the years. Maybe our we know our members are looking for different things, so are your guests too. Uh, yes, they are. They're looking for something which is relatively informal, but very knowledgeable. So if just, for example, with our, with our team of uh, sommeliers, they need to be extremely knowledgeable on the whole wine list, on every single wine. So you can ask them any question, they have to, they'll know the answer. But, they cannot, they, but they're not going to be overly in your face talking about all their knowledge. So it's a lot about reading the guest. I think that's the thing that's changed a lot is how you deal with each different guest and how you read them to understand what they want and how to give it to them in that time frame. So it goes back to watching, learning. Exactly. You know, doing what you can. Okay, yeah. very interesting. Always, it's, it's always learning. In a restaurant, every day is different. You're never yeah. gonna have the same guests two days in a row. So each day is gonna be different. People will come in at different times, they'll order different things, they'll react in different ways. And uh, a restaurant is so, personable, so it's, um, it really depends on how you're feeling. So if somebody comes into the restaurant angry, you've got one opportunity to turn their, turn their anger into them having a pleasant moment. If somebody comes in and is very happy, you make a mistake, you can very quickly turn that into an angry moment. But then how do you get back and to them? Especially somewhere here where it's, I mean, expectations are understandably very high, you know, for such a, but I guess you guys put it off, so. <laughs> we try, we try, we try. No, but it's, it's, I mean, the great thing is that, I mean, it's a beautiful restaurant. People are expecting a lot when they come in and we, we're fortunate enough that we, we do deliver 99.9% .9 of the time. The guests love the food. We do kitchen tours so that you get to meet Jean-Philippe as well, which is something which is incredible. See, so he's, he, you, you've spoken to him, so you know what he's like when he's speaking about uh, how, his food. How is that connection with the kitchen and the front of house? You know, how do you nurture that? Is that, it's not, 
I guess you don't want too much us and them. You want to keep it. No, no, it's really it's it's got to be a team. Yeah. So um so we work very closely with the uh, with the kitchen. So we um we still write all of our dockets by hand. So we yeah. always have to give them into the kitchen. So we're always talking to, to yeah, Jean Philippe. Exactly with yeah. Jean Philippe and Alberto. So it's only a few of us to take the orders. We call away everything manually as well. So we're always always connecting and always talking to the um to the team. To, to Jean Philippe's philosophy, which we spoke about in the other episodes, which is that he wants your person his personality on the plate. Would you would you say that's similar with service, or would you say it's a little bit more restrained? Um, I mean, we we want his personality come, to come out onto yeah. the plate as well. So every time, so whenever he changes the menu, we do a full tasting with the whole team. So he will come out and he will serve us the dish to the to the whole the front of house team, and he will explain everything that's on the plate and the reasons why. That's a good day. His uh, it's amazing. <laughs> I love menu changes. Yeah. Um, so he explains everything, and um, it's a great way for the staff to understand what he's doing. Yeah. And then we need to then come up with the the way that we can transmit that to the guests. Right. So that the guests feel his personality without speaking to him they understand exactly what's on the plate and why he's put it on the plate yeah so you're this conduit between exactly yeah. amazing so he's got to work in, in that way and then we bring them into the kitchen and then he explains it all again in his own way and they obviously they prefer our way but uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> thank you Chris for taking us through all the stages of service and what it takes to have amazing service at the Three Star Restaurant that finishes off our series so I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, if you haven't seen the other episodes please have a look <laughs> <laughs>